Well, I think uh, uh, the success of Nandan Clean Tech uh, Limited uh, uh, is a first mover advantage, as you rightly said. Uh, a because probably we are one of those companies, you know, who initiated uh, the biofuels project almost about a decade back when nobody was actually thinking of biofuels. Uh, during that particular time, you know, the government of India was looking to have alternative sources of energy. Uh, you know, uh, as you're aware that India uh, imports almost 80% of the oil is imported into the country. And the government was looking to have some kind of a substitute uh, to sort of take up biofuels and to look at about blending about 20%. Uh, 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 to look at 20% blending, uh, that was what the initial target which the government of India was looking at. It. Uh, fortunately for us, what has happened was we have been into the plant sciences business. You know, when the company started, uh, we are into the crop sciences, we are into the plant sciences. And initially the company, when we started the company, our focus was on natural plants. And uh, we are st we have another vertical where we do the entire value chain of natural plants. We you know do research on the natural plant. We take the active ingredient from those crops. We convert them into bulk extract, and we convert them into formulation. Basically, it goes for lifestyle disorders. It goes for healthcare industry. Uh, and uh, the the background of our company is that uh, as we are doing research on the natural crops, Jetropa Karkas was taken as a natural crop research, not as a biofuel crop research. So what has happened was, you know, we had that advantage of the R&D on the plant sciences of it. During the same time, as I was talking to you that, you know, the government of India was looking to have, uh, uh, you know, carbon emission reduction, blending uh, targets, and they're looking at renewable sources of energy. Uh, and uh, during uh, the same time, the planning commission had come with a report, especially on the biofuels part of it. And Jetropa Karkas was mentioned in that particular uh, report. Uh, we said that we were already doing research, not from the perspective of the biofuel part of it, but we are looking from the natural side of it, because uh, Jetropa Kargas as a plant has got other properties which are used into pharma industry, which are used for, you know, in the natural uh, natural industry. It's literally called as village pharmacy. So that was an advantage, you know, we had moved into it, and we saw that there's a tremendous amount of opportunity in this country, uh, and then we thought that, you know, we look at uh, looking at biofuels then. Ha that's how the story of the biofuels started with our company. Uh, where uh, no other companies were thinking of it, we first thought that is going to be the future industry is going to be the industry for the future. So as you rightly said, yes, this was the first more advantage the company started with. What was your first breakthrough and um, help us understand the markets that you're catering at the moment? Uh, you know, before I go to that, just let me go back to the history. Uh, you know, uh, from the perspective of the biofuel, in, you know, as a market, as a country, how we are looking at it. Uh, you're aware that the 2009 policy you know, had come out of the biofuel policy in India, where they looked at 20% blending by 2017 and about 5% blending in ethanol. Uh, and when you look at the kind of uh, uh, requirement of 20% blending of green diesel or biodiesel, you require almost about 16.5 million metric tons of green diesel or biodiesel. And to produce that amount of biodiesel, you require almost about 13 to 14 million, you know, uh, hectares. 13 million hectares are required. So when you look at the market size, it's about almost 16.5 million metric tons of biodiesel required for the country. So if you look at 20% blending. Uh, and to cater to that, you require almost, as I told you, about you know, 13 million hectares are required for that. Uh, but there are a lot of challenges, you know, to reach that kind of a target, you know. Uh, and the, the kind of time you're looking, time horizon we're looking at about 2017 is not too far. Realistically, I don't think it's going to happen, you know, by 2017, 20% blending. So in, uh, from, from our perspective, I think if in case we can reach about three to four percent blending target, I think it's a huge amount of target which has been achieved. And I think uh, if in case we reach that amount of target, also I think it's it's a very good start for the country. Uh, so uh, what we have done particularly uh, in, in this particular perspective is that to reach that kind of a target, we have set ourselves as a plan for next five years. So what we are going to target, we're going to target about 2.5 million metric tons in next five years. And that would come, uh, you know, with a 1 million hectares of the land area. So 
I think uh, when you look at uh, the kind of market size of 16.5 million metric tons, you know, 20% blending, and we're targeting about 2.5, I think we're comfortably about 3 to 4% market share. Uh, and comfortably, I think that can be achieved. Um, so let's now let's talk about the challenges. Um, there has been a lot of oppositions and criticisms as far as um, the cultivation of crops like uh, uh, you know biofuel crops, jatropha, etc., are concerned. Um, we are there have been UN figures talking about. Uh, almost 5,000 deaths of children below the age of five every day. We t what I'm talking about is food crisis in India, which is in, in the world, which is endemic. So as more and more, because it's a competitive business, as more and more land is brought under cultivation, the problem of food, you know, security, uh, that it it's going to become more challenging. So to begin with, uh, such a business model is great. But how challenging do you think do you think it, it's going to get in, in in the years to come? Well, it's very interesting. Uh, you know, for any country, food is going to be the first priority for any country, uh, be it Africa, India, or for any par part of the world. Food is going to be the first priority for any country. Uh, when we started this business, we always said to ourselves that you know we are going to be a sustainable energy company. We are not going to be a biodiesel company. We are going to be a sustainable energy company. The reason is that uh, when you look at the land you know profile of any country you know, there are certain zones which are being uh, there are certain zones where you grow agricultural crop there are certain you know uh, areas where grazing happens for the animal uh, to graze that and you know to, to generate that feed stock for the animal and there are certain areas where uh, there is an availability of land is there so uh, india predominantly is an you know a net importer of uh, edible oil so we cannot be looking at you know looking at edible oil to convert into biodiesel so we are very clear on that and uh, number one number two uh, what we are looking at is that we will be only targeting that amount of land which is basically not being used for the agricultural you know areas for example obviously when you go to a farmer and ask him to grow uh, a crop of paddy or jatropha he's going to grow paddy first so he's not going to grow jatropha so we are not touching those land which are predominantly the agricultural land typically I'm talking about land profile where the minimum rainfall is about 600 to 800 you know mm rainfall yeah, part of Rajasthan part of Gujarat part of you know Marathwada part of uh, Chhattisgarh part of MP so these are certain profile of land which has already been demarcated for you know this kind of crop in fact when you look at the policy also they have you know mentioned about this that it has to be grown on the marginal uh, you know lands so we are very clear from the beginning that you know we have to grow on the marginal land, not touching the agriculture part of it. And uh, in, in growing those particular crop, also uh, we have you know when you uh, there are about three challenges we found to ourselves. One is that uh, this, as I as I told in my beginning of my talk, that it's it's a new crop, it's a new industry, you know, and not much of research has gone into the bioenergy crop. So first challenge we took for ourselves is that because of the small land holding and to get a better productivity on the marginal land, we said that we need to do an organized research first. So the first focus on us was to do research on the bioenergy crop. Today, as a company, we are one of the, you know, we are the only company to have acquired about four patents on Jatropa carpus on high yielding variety, high oil content, intraspecific and high oilic content. Our understanding was that, you know, if in case you're looking at a target of either 16.5 uh, million metric tons or 2.5 million metric tons, you require a huge land bank to cultivate that. And the land banks are fragmented, you know, a small land bank, you know, the, uh, the holding of any farmer is very, very small. It could be maximum about 1.5 to 2 hectares. So the challenge is how do I scale up, you know, my operations and how do I get better productivity on the marginal land? The first challenge we said was that we will give a certain amount of scientific, uh, uh, you know, knowledge uh, to to the to the for productivity of the land. So uh, we have, you know, we have collected about 1,600 accessions across the country, and we have 40 scientists working in our research center, which is one of the largest research center in Hyderabad. We have about 800 acres of research area there, and we are doing multiple research on you know bioenergy crop. As I told, we have about four patents on that. 
so the objective was to get a better yield on the marginal land so average our average yield is about double you know for example it is about let's say 500 grams so our uh, our yield is about 1 1 kg per plant so that is how we are increasing the productivity on the marginal land number one number two uh, you know how do i now uh, scale my operations because you require huge amount of feedstock it's not about the demand it's about the feedstock right. it's not an oil like a fossil fuel you dig it you get it out so you have it has to grow on ground there is a gestation period you know where you have to grow the plant it takes about minimum two year three year four years sometimes depending on the crop depending on the profile of land depending on the rain uh, conditions and things like that so we said to ourselves that can we look at certain innovative models and uh, i think our focus was always innovation innovation in the r and d innovation in terms of implementing the projects on ground um talking about r and d in fact that was a separate question because uh, r and d is going to be is it, it it in fact is a very critical element of the entire business model um can you give us some figure uh, as to what percentage of the total turnover goes to uh, towards r and d activities in your well uh, i think probably uh, the for our company as we've been a plant sciences company right. our focus always have been r and d right. research and development either in the natural plant business or in the biofuel business so at least about 6 to 8% of the uh, you know our revenues are actually we again drive back into the r and d because i think to us uh, innovation and r and d is been the key for our success uh, uh, either from the plant sciences part of it are in the conversion technologies also which i'll come to a little later but uh, today in fact we have increased our uh, research based you know on multiple bioenergy crop apart from jetroba you're looking at pongania simaroba uh, camellina and lot of other crops so we are increasing the basket of you know uh, uh, of products and with that we are also researching it so i i think research has been the key focus for our company and we say spent considerable amount of time energy money manpower into the research part of it right. yeah. let me now try to touch upon a very um, critical aspect of the business its competitiveness the reason you're a hit today is because one it's innovative two it's clean three it's catering to the to the to the energy hungry world uh, very key, key, key the key aspect is there's a price difference between the price of biofuel and the conventional um what comes from the crude oil because of this demand gap economics says that in due course of time the price of biofuels should increase and then con convergence theory says that the price of biofuel and the price of let's say diesel should converge at a point after a few years then as the price gap diminishes that will take some bit of competitiveness question down your comments on it well, i i think uh, uh, when you look at uh, from the perspective of the pricing today the fossil fuel you know averaging between 80 dollars per barrel to 120 dollars per barrel uh, you know it's going to get at the it's going to be an increasing side uh, you know over a period of time uh, well if in case you compare the fossil fuel uh, the price along with the biodiesel price today at this point in time uh, it is expensive because you don't have the feed stock mm -hmm. the, the challenge here is how how much if in case the, it's like a demand and supply right. there's a demand the supply there's no supply of the feed stock uh, if in case we can increase the uh, you know the the feed stock side of it the the competitiveness of the biodiesel can come down and uh, we have made our own calculations especially from the pricing of the biodiesel is concerned so comfortably between you know 70 to 75 dollar of the fossil fuel price can be can be manufactured biodiesel can be manufactured i'm talking from the indian perspective uh, a for that what we are doing is uh, from our our company's perspective we are looking at innovative technologies again from the processing side of it we, because we understand that you know uh, you uh, this is a large volume low value business logistics and you know that can kind of creating that kind of a land bank and creating a uh, unit for that it's going to be high cost in, you know infrastructure so what we are trying to do is we are like looking more of a decentralized model we are going to have a feed stock produced there 
and apart from the seed we are also looking at certain second generation technologies right. along with the biomass yeah. can be converted into the oil yeah. so our, the objective of our company is to reduce the cost be more competitive than the fossil diesel price and also convert the entire biomass into green diesel you know the the reason when you are growing this either the bioenergy crop you generate huge amount of biomass right. we are going to use the biomass along with the seed so that the entire you know biomass the seed is being utilized and it's going to be a decentralized model so that you have the feedstock there you convert the green diesel there itself and you can supply it to you know to the end consumers so when you compare the cost you know the biodiesel pricing can be much competitive than the uh, fossil diesel price so it requires feedstock it requires innovative technologies if in case we can sort of get into innovative technologies and feedstock i think biodiesel price is going to be much competitive look at from the perspective of india today you know there was a recent price hike of diesel for about 5 rupees which has really created a huge hue and cry across the country and not only that it's also affect the inflation you know ultimately it's affect your transportation cost goes up your food prices goes up so there is always a sign of a you know interlink nexus between the food prices and the you know diesel prices so i think somewhere we need to strike the balance and i think there is no other choice as the cost of fossil diesel is going to go up the crude oil prices are going to go up i think we need to look at alternative i think uh, uh, in the long term uh, i think uh, it's going to be there's no other choice for the countries Mr Jadhav uh, let's talk about uh, the big names who've been really interested uh, in associating um, with clean, with Nandan clean tech uh, we've heard uh, of names like uh, Boeing and Emirates trying to uh, you know associate uh, themselves uh, with you tell us about your clientele in the aviation sector and how promising does it look for you as a potential market well uh, i think as a biofuel company we are looking at multiple verticals uh, because as i told you in the beginning of my uh, talk that our objective is to first develop the feed stock so uh, once we have the feed stock then what will happen is we are looking at second generation technologies you know where we can convert into green diesel and the other vertical which are looking at in the aviation biofuel also we are aware as per the world economic forum report by 2050 there is a target to reduce about 50% of co2 emissions right. because there are huge amount of you know uh, emissions happening in the air right. and most of the uh, you know airlines including uh, japan airlines and including you know uh, uh, virgin atlantic and uh, new uh, new zealand airlines and a lot of these airlines have already tested Uh, biofuels especially jetropa camelina other you know uh, uh, green diesel and it's been running successfully right. so i think uh, 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 there is a huge demand in the aviation biofuel as per the target mandate they have to reduce 50% so there is a surge of demand which is actually shot up uh, we also don't want to miss that opportunity so as we have you know our, we have the feed stock with us we have the research we have the processing unit so what we are looking at is adding certain technologies you know uh, to our own facilities so we are adding an aviation technology because there is a certain amount of conversion technologies are required and uh, we are looking at multiple feeds of including waste oil including you know fish oil including the r- regular bioenergy seo oil and things like that so uh, once we have that kind of a feed stock then we we are also targeting the emirates and boeing and things like that uh, um, uh, has any aviation company yet contracted you well actually uh, you know we are collaborating with certain technologies for example we have collaborated with honeywell yeah. honeywell and our company is actually looking for uh, uh, developing a technology honeywell has already got a technology for aviation biofuel so we would also associate with them mm-hmm. for our feed stock to go through honeywell technology right. ultimately once this uh, a, a, the, the technology is already available what we are now looking at is how do you want to tie up for sustainable energy with large companies like this right. we had a initial talk with emirates right. and there was a some interest which has come from emirates right. so currently what we are looking at is to upgrade our facilities to aviation technologies right. so we see a future in that and right. we are very keen that you know right. we'll get into that particular segment also if i may ask um what percentage of overall turnover are you expecting from the aviation sector well uh, uh for us aviation uh, you know sector probably would 
add to at least 30 to 40 percent of our turnover. You know, that's what we are looking at it because that's that's a global requirement. Uh, to do that, what we are also doing, uh, apart from India, we are moving, you know, to Africa and Southeast Asia because ultimately, you also have to see the logistics. You also have to see, you know, where I can supply the feedstock. Uh, feasibility and things like that. So we are looking uh, Africa as one of our major destination there. In fact, we already initiated projects in Rwanda and Botswana, uh, so that the feed sort is developed there and conversion can happen there and the supplies can happen, particularly to the European other you know airlines companies. Right. Um, at this stage of uh, London Clean Tech, uh, obviously uh, catering to uh, sectors like aviation will make a lot of business sense. Um, but looking at the mass, catering to the mass uh, markets of India, uh, how promising does it look for you? Um, and what are the what are the plans and strategies to penetrate the uh, mass middle class market of India? Well, the first priority would always be, you know, uh, uh, to to cater to the Indian requirement because obviously uh, there are certain. Uh, when we are developing the projects in India, we need to supply it in India. I cannot be doing it, you know, for supplying outside the country. Because there are there are certain uh, uh, mandates which the government of India would also look at. So, you know, today there is no mandate, but over a period of time, as food stock develops and the markets get matured, so there will be the first uh, fulfillment would be have to be to the mass catering of the transport sector. So that would be always our first priority. What we are looking at is you know uh, not taking the SVO part of it, the state vegetable oil, the other source of raw material including as I told you some of the waste oil or bunker oil or some of the other oils which will be used for converting into the a, a, you know ATF technology, aviation uh, turbine technology, fuel uh, for that. So that is one part of the segment which will be catering to and uh, what we also have done is we have a joint venture with Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited. So probably this in turn would supply to the ATF, you know, to, to the uh, to, to the airliners. So we will supply it to the oil company. So in turn they will uh, you know, use it uh, to the uh, airline companies. So I think the first priority will always be to the the transport sector in this country, uh, and look at alternative ways and means to supply to the aviation biofuels also. Um, let's talk. A, give us some forward-looking remarks about the strategies and where do you where do you intend to position yourself um, in a span of let's say ten years from now. Uh, Ten years from now, probably we'll be the only, you know, green, sustainable green company, uh, because I think uh, for us, uh, it took us almost about a decade to get in from a lab scale right. to on-ground, you know, projects. Now, right. I think now today we are we are confident that it's going to get into a large-scale model now, right. especially from the perspective of the R&D what we are doing. Mm -hmm. We're increasing the, our basket of you know bioenergy crops. Right. More research is happening in that area. Right. Ultimately, we're converting uh, the, the research onto the land, mm -hmm. so our landscape is also getting increased. Right. Uh, and as I told you, we are looking at about almost one million hectares right. in Southeast Asia, Africa, and India. Right. And uh, our target ultimately is to convert into you know green diesel, sustainable energy, and also we are looking at various means of uh, uh, you know green you know, technologies. Right. So I think probably you would like to be. The, we would like to attain the leadership in the biodiesel industry. Starting from plant science to biofuels, um, do we see Chandan Clean Tech diversifying its company profile and incorporating other renewable energy um, in its business model in years to come? Uh, the answer is uh, at this point in time, our focus is only on the bio green bio diesel part of it, and we're looking at different verticals on the transportation sector of it, uh, from biomass to green diesel, or uh, from aviation, you know, uh, fuels also. Uh, as we go along, as we have developed the landscape, we'll also look at hybrid models, uh, probably a combination of biomass, solar combination of you know the wind uh, along with uh, biofuel because as we have the land mass being increased so we look at hybrid uh, power hybrid uh, technologies also uh, ultimately our focus would always be in the uh, biodiesel sector